everyone and welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to be taking pinguicular leaf pullings. So this is what I will be doing, um, some, something like that. I'll be using one of these uh, food container boxes. These are some that I took a couple of months ago from a pinguicular tina. So it's a very common one that you would find at Garden Center. It's got a nice big green growth to it. Um, so from one leaf I have got several plants. As you can see, this one's just got one, and these ones got a couple. The actual um, ones obviously in here are quite leggy. As you can see, they're not um, ground hungry like your normal pinguicular, but they um, are only like this because they do need repotting, and I've just left them in here. But they're doing okay, and they'll perk up quite quickly once repotted. Um, so these are ones I took in November um, from a pinguicular weezer. So I put them in this pot and I've never transplanted, they've always been in this pot since the day I took the leaf pullings. And as you can see, they've grown into some nice, healthy, mature plants. So they've got nice shape on the leaves, some of them are even colouring up. Um, so they're looking quite nice and that's obviously the result that you're hoping for at the end of it. And this is the adult that I will probably be taking the pullings off of today. It's still quite small compared to the other ones. The other ones have got wider growth. This one's been quite compact in rosette form, which I would say is down to probably light in my greenhouse. But it's doing well and it's got a little seedling there as well coming out the base of it. But I'll probably take the pullings from both these uh, weezers, so the young ones and the adult one. Okay, so to take your leaf pullings, you are going to need obviously a container to put them in. I um, am going to use like this sandwich box, which um, I got a pack of three of them for like a pound, so they're really cheap, so anything like that. Or um, if you've got any like leftover curry takeaway pots, these are some other pinguic the weezer puddings that I took months ago. Again, they need repotting and better lighting because again, they've gone all leggy as well. Um, so anything from that size to this size, depending on how many you want to take or what have you got laying about, you can just obviously simply as well use a pot like I've done here. Um, so for these ones I am going to put them in sphagnum moss, so in your pinguicular can be planted in pure sphagnum. Um, I usually just use peat and perlite, but um, for taking my pullings I often do um, use just pure sphagnum to start it off. Um, or I have been doing so recently. So I'm using this um, New Zealand Jumbo Sphagnum Moss, which um, I just got a big bag for, so it's lasted me quite a long time actually. Um, I don't use my sphagnum very often, only mainly for like propagation and stuff like that, but it's been quite good to use. So just make it even, you don't need that much because as long as the um, puddings are moist, um, and then obviously they've got media to sit on, then it's all right. So this method works for most of, um, well, I would say most of all pinguicular. So they're quite easy to take. This is the easiest and quickest way to propagate your pinguicular. So it's quite hard, or well, harder to um, do them from seed. So I have um, done some pinguicular grandiflora from seed, and. Um, they did all work, it took a long time for the um, stratification over winter, um, but they had good germination rates, but I would definitely say that this is the easiest method because it will they will come up in like a good week or so. The these ones here only took nine days to come up, which I wrote on the old label that I had in here. Um, so yeah, once you just lay it down, so it doesn't matter if there's a few gaps, as long as you just got it like that side. And then obviously you need to make sure it's sufficiently moist. Okay, so I'm just going to water them, that's why I put this tray down, because obviously, if you've probably noticed, I am inside doing this, instead of being out in my greenhouse. Um, so if I just... You just want to make sure it's moist, you don't want water sitting in the bottom, you don't want it boggy. Um, you just want the moss to be moist, and so as long as the leaf pullings are in contact with water, then that's alright. So that's all I'm going to do for that. So you don't want it sitting in the bottom, you just want the moss to be wet, so you could touch it, it's quite damp. Obviously, as... Um, you're keeping the pullings in there, you could either put the lid on, so I usually put the lid on to keep the humidity up, um, or if you don't have a lid, you could either use cling film, or if not, just obviously make sure you maintain the watering and make sure it's always damp. Okay, so now to take the pullings off the plant. 
So this bit's really easy. You just need to select a healthy leaf off of your plant. So if you, obviously if you've got several, take several from each plant. Or if you've just got the one plant and you're doing this for the first time, then pick some nice leaves. So you can either pick new growth. You can use the old leaves. So if we see on my older specimen, I have got some older leaves around here, which obviously are different colours um, from previous growth. But they're not dead or dying, so these will still produce... Um, obviously plantlets. So I'm going to start with these younger ones here. So to get the leaves you just easily tease it off the plant. You might want to hold the plant as well like that. And if I just put it on my hand you can see it's got a little bit of white which is obviously from the centre crown of the plant and then that's your leaf. And you just need to place them gently on the soil so the white bit is touching. Um, the moss and then you just continue like that so it depends how many you want to take um, also you've got if you've got a good plant or several plants with loads of leaves then take loads these are very easy methods the success rate is very high so I'll just take one off of here again this is a smaller leaf so it doesn't again matter the size of the leaf either small leaves and big leaves will have similar rate you just keep taking them and placing them on the soil And just take a few at the back here. See, so yeah, these leaves do damage quite easily if you snap them, but as long as they're in contact with the soil, so I've got a bit stuck there, then it's fine. So, yeah, just continue to take. I'm going to take, I think, six. So that one was an older leaf, just to show. And then another older leaf here of a different colour. And place it onto the soil. Okay, so once you've taken your pinguicular leaf pullings, this is what it should look like. So as you can see, I have spaced the six that I took out on the moss, allowing room between them so when they start growing, which will be from the tips here, they will have room to grow. Obviously make sure that the medium is always moist and that the leaves themselves are in contact with the medium. So don't let them dry out and make sure they're just laying on the surface. Obviously don't cover them. And then once you have taken your puddings and you're happy with them, you get your lid and you will place it on. Make sure that obviously if your um, puddings are quite moist because this doesn't have drainage holes. So make sure that you don't leave it on and create too much humidity because that can create rot. Just make sure that you leave, obviously allow it to ventilate every now and then by taking the lid off. And if obviously you don't have a lid, make sure you keep it moist at all times and don't let it dry out. But that is basically the simple process of it and you should start seeing the pullings come out in a number of days. Um, so just keep an eye on them. But that is literally all you have to the process. So thank you very much for watching and enjoy your day.